Hi guys. Oh my goodness. Long time, no talk. Um, not on purpose though. We have not vlogged on this channel in like over a month now. I think it's been like almost a month and a half, which makes me so sad because I absolutely love this channel. And unfortunately, a lot of things happened that I didn't expect that kind of came out of nowhere and it caused everything to kind of go into a tailspin in one of like the busiest months of my life. So I figured today before we, instead of just like coming back and just jumping into like another vlog with you guys, it would be best if I like sat down and talked to you guys about everything that has happened. I haven't talked about this um, on any social media. Like I haven't talked about it on my main channel or Instagram or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I just was going to sit down and basically explain to you guys a little life update, I guess we could call it. And what happened, where we've been, why we haven't been vlogging and um, everything that's kind of gone on because I think now we're in the calm. Like there was like a huge storm and now I think we're like riding out to the calm. So we're just gonna get ready together, do a little get ready with me. I'm gonna go in with the A Cosmetics CC Nude Glow. Love this stuff. Um, okay, so I don't even know where to begin. There's so many different like little parts to this story. So I'm just gonna basically chat and update you guys and try and do this as concisely as possible and not have this video be five hours long. I have known for a long time that the month of April was gonna be really, really crazy. So you guys will have not really seen a lapse in videos, maybe like one or two here or there on my main channel. But for a while, I knew that the month of April was gonna be super crazy, super busy. And so I had been pre-filming videos for my main channel so that there was no lapse in videos, which ended up being a really good thing because um, there was a lot of time that I couldn't film and stuff because I knew we had things going on. With the vlog channel, kind of my, I thought was we will just kind of vlog as we go because this channel is very much like I know some people with their vlog channels they may like think of video ideas and then kind of like pre-film them like a little bit more polished like how my main channel is but for me for my vlog channel it truly just is a vlog channel where I bring you guys around organically to like what we're doing in our daily life I don't like sit around and think of ideas and then create video content around that if that kind of makes sense like I would do for my main channel so my whole plan was just to bring you guys around the whole month of April with all the stuff that we were doing and vlog it um, but unfortunately that didn't end up happening because of a couple of things which I'm gonna talk about. So that's basically why there was no lapse in videos on like my main channel and stuff is because much of it was pre-filmed. I had started pre-filming like literally in like February um, and all throughout March because I knew April was gonna be crazy. So my schedule for the very beginning of April was right in the beginning, I think like April 1st, I had to go to Sedona, Arizona with It Cosmetics. And so I was gonna go out there for a work trip for literally less than 24 hours by the time I flew out and came back. And then, and it's a far flight, it's like almost five hours from here, but it was a really, really awesome experience. I'm so happy that I was able to go to that. Um, but I was gonna go to that. I had to fly home really quick. I was gonna be home for like a couple hours. Then we needed to leave to the airport to go to Atlanta, Georgia, because Steven was in a wedding for one of his best friends from childhood. They live down in Georgia now. And so Steven was in the wedding. So we had to go down to the wedding in Atlanta, Georgia. And then our birthdays, Steven and I's birthdays are both in April. So we were supposed to go from Atlanta, Georgia, to Cabo, Mexico to celebrate our birthdays, um, which didn't end up happening. We did go to Cabo, but we went later. We had to cancel that trip. So we had to just come back from Atlanta back to New Jersey. And it was so expensive because I had to cancel everything on the last minute, but it was what it was. Um, and then later on in April, we just recently got back from Colorado because we had to go out there for my grandmother's um, funeral and memorial. My grandmother passed away in January. This is my dad's mom and she lived in Colorado. Um, but my dad is one of eight. So there's so many people, we live all scattered across the country. There's like a group of over 30 of us, which is just like her children and grandchildren. And so to get us all together took a little bit of time. So we just did that um, last week. So I was in Colorado for that. But that first little part of April was what was gonna be really crazy because it was a bunch of trips back to back, really not coming home and having any time. So to explain to you guys what ended up happening, I'm gonna bring you back first of all to March. Um, in March, I decided I'm a big baby when it comes to needles. It's ridiculous. I know it's just a fear that I have. I don't like needles. I don't like giving blood. That terrifies me. But I had realized that it had gotten to about probably 10 years since I had done a blood test and like given blood, you know, at like a you know, to for a doctor, like for a physical, um, and like ran all those tests that they normally do. And like, really, you should probably do that maybe every year, every two years or something. I'm not really sure what the exact term is, but I'm sure you're supposed to do it more than every 10 years. 
Um, and I realized the last time I probably did it when I was like a senior in high school or like going into college. So I was like, okay, I really probably should get this done. So I muster up the courage. I go to the doctor and I get the blood test done. She calls me back a couple days later. This is like mid-March before I'm going on any of these trips. And she's like, hey, everything came back perfect. Your blood is totally fine. Um, only thing that was a little weird is you have an elevated alkaline phosphate level, which I personally never heard of that before. And so I was like, okay. She's like, yeah, you know, it is pretty elevated, but you know, I wouldn't be super worried about it. Let's just wait a couple months, see if anything comes up. Um, you know, if not, we'll retest you, whatever, and kind of go from there. So I was like, okay, she didn't seem concerned about it. So I wasn't concerned about it. And overall, I felt completely fine. So I was kind of just like, okay, she told me that. And then I kind of just moved on because I was like, okay, yeah, I mean, pretty much I'm good, you know? Little did I know. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, I'm just grabbing my concealers. About two days before I was supposed to leave for the first leg of my trip to go on the A Cosmetics work trip, I woke up and I had a lot of sensitivity in my gums on this upper side of my mouth, which I thought was weird. I thought we had eaten kind of like a spicy meal the night before. So I thought that maybe one of the spices got like underneath my gum or something and was irritating my gums. So I was like brushing like really heavy and like really flossing to try and get whatever was like irritating them out of there, which in the end just ended up making it so much worse because I was just like, what is happening? And it wasn't pain really, it was just like weird sensitivity. So I kind of just tried to like not think about it. And that kind of spiraled into as the day went on by that night, I was literally in tears crying from pain. Um, the sensitivity had quickly turned into really, really bad pain. And I'm not an emotional or like overly sensitive person. Like I have a pretty high pain tolerance. So for me to cry from pain is not you know, I could count on my one hand, like how many times I've in my life I've cried from like pain, you know? And so it was definitely weird. I think I really scared Steven too, because he was like, what the heck is going on? He was like running to the local drugstore, got this like gel that I could put on my gums. Cause we just didn't know what was happening to try and ease the pain. That wasn't even really working. So I was just like trying to take Advil, like whatever I could to ease the pain, because at this point it was past normal business hours. So there was no dentists that were available. Even like my mom found someplace that was supposed to be like an emergency dentist place and nobody answered. So there's really nobody that I knew was going to be able to help me till the next morning. So I was like, just in so much distress. So I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I had basically convinced myself that I had like gum disease, like, which is weird because I take really good care of my teeth, you know, brush my teeth, floss them, mouthwash, like all that kind of stuff. You even use fluoride sometimes at home. Like I do take good care of my mouth. And so it would be surprising if I had gum disease, but I'm like, this is what it has to be. Like there's no other explanation. I am in so much pain, like something is wrong. So anyways, I barely slept the entire night because of the amount of pain I was in. And I could literally just like feel my pulse like in this upper portion of my mouth, super weird. As soon as like the clock struck like 7 a.m., I was like, okay, I think some of these dentists might start to be open. So I start calling them. So I call my local dentist and she is on spring break. So she's not there because this was all happening, I guess the week where a lot of kids have off from school. So people go on spring break or whatever. And so she was on spring break. She was not there um, in the office. So they were like, we can take you next week. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. Like I, I'm gonna have to go somewhere else because I'm in so much pain. I need, I need somebody that can help me now. So I called my old dentist from where I grew up also on spring break. I'm like, you have to be kidding me. Of course, like these people deserve time off. Like I don't really get it, but I'm like, oh my God, like who can help me? So I end up calling around like random dentists just in my area that I had never been to, didn't know anything about just to see like who can take me today. I am in so much pain, like literally in tears on the phone with these people. Finally, this random dentist in town was able to take me. Um, I went over there and the guy took the guy like looked at my mouth briefly. He really didn't look at my mouth very much, which concerned me a little bit to begin with. And then he just took a bunch of x-rays and he was like, there's nothing wrong. And I was like, sir, respectfully, I know that you're a dentist. Like I, please, sir, I'm telling you, I am in excruciating pain. I am not like an over dramatizer, whatever the word would be. Like, I was like, I, I know there's something wrong. He was like, your teeth look perfect. And I was like, are, did you look at my gums? Like, I think it's my gums. Like, do I have gum disease? He's like, no, your gums are pink. They're healthy. There's nothing wrong with your gums. And he's like, I've looked at the x-rays. I can't see anything wrong in your x-rays. And I'm like, there has to be something wrong. <laughs> like, I'm like, you, I, like, sir, I'm literally like crying in this office right now. And I think the dental hygienist or like his assistant or whoever, she felt really bad. 
And she was like, let me take another x-ray. So they were taking like x-rays at all these different angles like of my teeth. And now a little backstory that I didn't mention as well, which is honestly something that I forget half the time. But when I was eight years old, I knocked out not my front tooth, but the tooth next to it. So my entire life, pretty much for the past 21 years, I have had a faked tooth there. I do have a real tooth underneath. It's very little, um, but I knocked it out in an accident when I was little. I had to have like a root canal and a fake tooth put on that I've had for pretty much my entire life. So the dentist did know that and he was really looking at that tooth and then he was like, basically, I can't see anything and on my x-ray, it looks fine, but there's a chance that that tooth could be fractured and I just can't see it and that's what's causing you pain. So he's like, you're gonna need to go to an oral surgeon to get like an actual like CAT scan, I guess, or like CT, MRI, a more in-depth x-ray basically. I don't remember what the exact term was. Um, to really see what's wrong because I can't see anything on my end and I don't have like the machines that do that I guess like you'd have to go to an oral surgeon for that. So I was like, okay um, And I was like, you know, I'm supposed to be leaving for all these trips like whatever and he was like, you know Basically, he was less than helpful charging me like $250 to do absolutely nothing uh, And tell me that he doesn't know besides the point. So he recommends a local oral surgeon I get in the car and I call this office immediately. I call I kid you not, also on spring break, I'm like, is there anyone that works in dentistry that is not on spring break? Like, what is going on? So I'm like, okay, when is he gonna be back from spring break? And they're like, oh, like we don't even have an opening till like June. I'm like, okay. So at this point I have like lost all hope. I am miserable because I can't even think straight because of the amount of pain that I'm in and no one is helping me. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so I go home, I tell Steven everything. He's like, all right, we are just gonna go through on Google, oral surgeon and call every single oral surgeon in New Jersey till we get somebody that can see you because like, we need to get this figured out. I was really scared at this point because I'm like, I started to think I'm like, maybe because this doctor can't see anything wrong with my mouth, it's something else. Like there's something wrong with like my brain or something and nobody's seeing it and we're, it's being misdiagnosed as like mouth pain. You know, you go down that rabbit, that rabbit hole. Like I'm not normally like that. Um, like where I like think crazy things, but I was like in so much pain that I couldn't even think straight. So anyways, we start calling, I kid you not, you guys, probably, we probably called about 50 oral surgery places. I'm not even kidding. Me and Steven sat down for about two hours going through all of these places, anywhere that I could find on Google that was an oral surgeon and trying to call them, but I guess oral surgeons are booked out for months and months and months because you know it's typically not as last minute of a thing, I guess, as like what I had. I don't really know, but like everywhere was like, we really can't take you to like May or June. And I was like, at this point, it's still March. It's like the very end of March. And I'm like, I need to see somebody like today. I am in so much pain. And like everyone's just kind of like, I'm sorry, like we don't have any availability, like, which like I get it. So I was kind of just like, do I go to the hospital? Like, I don't even know because nobody can help me. Like, and I'm like, I don't even know, like is the ER, like obviously doctors are amazing, but I'm like, are they really gonna know like how to look if something's wrong in my mouth? Like I just, oh, sorry, <laughs> throwing my concealer around. I was like giving up at this point, like for real. Finally, I believe it was Steven, cause we were both calling different people at the same time to just like get through all of these oral surgeons to see who can take me. Or no, it was me, it was me, I'm sorry, it wasn't Steven. He found them and then I called them. Um, it was like this oral surgery place, it was like almost an hour from my house. And the receptionist was so nice. I will forever be thankful for her. She could hear in my voice, like I think I was actually crying like when I was on the phone with her and she could hear in my voice like how much pain I was in. And she was like, listen, cause originally she told me, she was like, we don't have any openings till June. And she was like, listen, I can hear how much pain you're in. I wanna help you. What I need you to do is come to our office tomorrow at 7 a.m. when we open. And at some point tomorrow, she's like, I can't, I don't know when it will be. I can't give you like a timeline. You could have to wait for a couple hours, but at some point tomorrow, I will have one of the oral surgeons here do the scan of your mouth. Cause I told her, I was like, I just need a scan so we can see what's going on. Um, you know, I don't really like, I just need to figure out what it is, what it is that's wrong. And like these places are the ones that have the scans or whatever. So she's like, all right, come tomorrow and just wait in the waiting room. And at some point tomorrow, like she's like, we close it, we open at seven, we close at four. So get here at seven, by four o'clock, I'll have one of the oral surgeons look at your mouth and do the scan at some point tomorrow. And I was like, thank you so much, like forever grateful for that woman. So we got up really early the next day, drove out there. I was there right at seven. I only had to wait about an hour. One of the oral surgeons took me, they did this whole scan of like my face. 
and like my whole head actually. And he came in like maybe five minutes later and he's like, you have a really bad infection in your root. And I'm like, oh. So at this point I was like, I was so relieved because I was so scared that the tooth was gonna be fractured. And then at that point it was, I was gonna have to have that removed and get an implant put in. And I would have had to have like a fake like flipper tooth for like eight months which is crazy. Um, and I was really scared that that was what was wrong with the tooth. And he's like, no, that's not what's wrong. Um, you have a really bad infection. And I'm like, I thought I had like a root canal like when I was little, he's like, you did typically. And he's like, they can become infected. Typically it would have happened like maybe a year or two years after I got it when I was eight years old, but somehow 21 years later, it became infected. Um, and he's like, this has been going on for a long time. Like this didn't just happen, but you are just now experiencing the pain from it. But he's like, this has been brewing for a long time. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, okay. Like, so that, um, so he's like, you know, your face very well in the next like 24 hours or so could start to really swell up. He's like, I've seen people with these type of infections where they're like in a lot of pain, the face doesn't swell. And then all of a sudden their face like explodes really, really badly. So I was like, oh my goodness. Okay. At this point I was supposed to leave the next day to go to Sedona for a cosmetics. And so I was like, oh my goodness, okay. Uh, so I thought that I was just, you know, when you think infection, like, oh, take an antibiotic and it goes away. Like, I was like, oh, this is gonna be okay. Like everything is gonna be okay. And he's like, I'm going to give you an antibiotic so that this doesn't spread any more than it already has because we need to control it. And I don't want your face to like explode, but that's not gonna solve the problem. The only way that we can get rid of the infection is to surgically remove it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> So he's like, you're gonna need to go to another doctor because I don't do that and referred me to another doctor. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious. So I'm like, okay, thank goodness. He prescribed me though, a medication to help control the infection, which actually took away my pain. That with Advil took away my pain, my pain very fast, um, like to a much more livable level. Like I was not, like I couldn't even think straight with the amount of pain that this was causing. It's so crazy. Like how much mouth pain can really like affect you. Like I literally couldn't think. This brought my pain down to a much more manageable level, but I knew that I had to go to that other doctor. So I told him, I was like, I'm supposed to leave for all these trips. Like I'm gonna be basically gone for the next two weeks. Like, is that okay? And he was like, no, it's not. Like he was like, you need to call this other doctor. And whenever that other doctor can see you, you need to go and you need to get this removed because you're at risk of this infection spreading to your heart, your brain, um, like went through all these things. You're jaw, your blood. Like I was like, whoa, okay. Like he's like, no, this is a very serious thing. You need to get it looked at immediately. He's like, you're, I want you to call the doctor and I'm also gonna call the doctor and talk to him. Like, cause I guess he had some sort of relationship with the guy that could do these type of um, surgeries. He's like, this needs to be done and it needs to be done as soon as possible. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay guys, sorry, camera died, but I'm back. So I go, this other this other doctor, um, basically he was also booked up till June because apparently just every dentist, like these people are booked up. I'm like, I should have been a dentist because they are just booked up for life. But um, he was able to take me, he took me that day like during, I guess like his lunch or something because he didn't have any openings, but, they, but the other doctor had called him. And so he took me, basically he walked me through the whole procedure. I told him everything that was going on because what I felt most bad about was I didn't really care about the Mexico. Like, of course I did. I wanted to go to Mexico, like Steven and I, but it was a leisure trip. We can go another time. I knew that we were gonna lose money and stuff canceling because obviously it was so close, but I was like, I don't even care about that. But I felt bad about the work trip with It Cosmetics. And then I also felt bad about the wedding because the wedding that we were going to right from there, Steven was in. So he was a groomsman. Had we just been regular attendants at the wedding, I wouldn't have felt as bad. I would have just explained to them the situation, sent them a check and probably not went. But because he was a groomsman in the wedding, I felt horrible, you know, two days before being like, oh, sorry, we can't come. And I knew Steven wasn't gonna go without me when he knew that I was in pain with all this stuff going on. So I explained all this to the doctor. Um, and I basically was like, you know, if you say that I have to have the surgery now, then I'll just cancel it all. It doesn't even really matter. Just like, let me know. And he was like, honestly, I can't even do the surgery today. I'll do it next week. And he could actually do it the day that we had to come home from the wedding anyway. So it worked out well, but he's like, you need to take these other medications to make sure that this doesn't get any worse. So at this point I'm on like so many medications um, to try and control this. Cause everyone's like biggest concern was that the infection was gonna spread, which thankfully it did not do. So I did go to Sedona with it cosmetics. Um, and then we did go to the wedding. I was in a bit of pain at both to be completely honest. It wasn't excruciating, but I certainly was not feeling myself. 
Um, and the whole thing was just scary to me because at any moment I was scared to death that this was gonna spread or my face was gonna explode because of what the other surgeon had said. And so I was really scared basically the whole time. Um, and not to mention, I don't, and I don't really like taking medicine or anything. And I'm on all these different medications. It was just like, not a great time and not something that I, to be completely transparent and honest, wanted to vlog because I was in a really bad headspace. So I was just scared in pain. Like it was just not good. The medication draws made my stomach sick. It was just, I'm a very positive person. This was, there's really no positive in this experience. So I'm sorry about that. But anyways, we get home. So actually on my birthday, they removed the tooth that had been in my mouth for like my whole life, the fake tooth and did the surgery to remove the infection. Um, after that, they put on what's called a temporary tooth until I could get a new like fake tooth that would be permanent. So I didn't really think about this much when I got this done. Cause again, like I was not really thinking about much of anything besides just getting this done with and out of pain. The temporary tooth, I guess they only make temporary stuff in so many colors and my teeth are pretty white, I guess. And so th the temporary tooth that I have in now, I'm gonna show you guys it in a second. I'm trying to like cover it with my mouth. The first one that I had was so off colored from my other teeth. It was just like, it was so, so bad. I'll try and insert it in a picture here. And like, honestly, I don't even care. Like I literally don't care. Like somebody in real life, whatever, like sees me with this yellow tooth, I could care less. But like my business is making online beauty content, beauty tutorials and makeup tutorials, stuff like that. And people online are mean and they will say something like nobody in real life, I don't think is gonna come out to me and be like, ew, why does your tooth look fake and yellow? Like it looked like a yellow chiclet or something. Beyond the point, but it made it very hard for me to film and do content, you know, because it was very glaringly obvious that there was something wrong. And I wasn't like in a space to really talk about it at that point. And so that was really tough. I think the guy felt really bad because he knew that it looked really bad and ended up actually, I had to put another one in anyways because the way that these, they had to put in something else to be able to adhere my new permanent tooth to. So I had to get it taken out again and then put this other thing in my mouth. To be honest, I don't know all of like the ins and outs about it, but I had to have another surgery after that. And so he put in a different one that was a better color, which is the one that I have now. So if you see, it's this one. Um, this looks 7 million times better. Obviously you can still tell like it's not right, but it looks 7 million times better than the other one did. And so this is what I've had in my mouth for like the past two weeks. I had the other one in for about two to three weeks. So all in all, it was over a month that I had this kind of weird fake tooth. And what stinks is that I've actually had people be like, oh, you do you have so much lip filler that like you can't um, speak right? And I'm like, what? And it's because the tooth is like really thick. It's not the same as my other teeth. And it, so it feels really weird in the mouth and it's not like fitted properly again, cause it's a temporary. And so it has kind of changed the way that I talk a little bit. I'm trying now to train myself to not talk weird. But I also think because I'm like subconsciously trying to keep my mouth down so that you see it less. People are like, oh, she has so much lip filler that she can't speak. Like, no, <laughs> that's not it. Um, <laughs> but I never talked about all this stuff that was going on. So I, you know, people didn't know, so I get that. But yeah, that's basically what has been going on. Tomorrow I get my permanent tooth. It's supposed to go in tomorrow. Hopefully fingers crossed, everything from the lab came back normal. Um, and my permanent actual tooth will go in. That'll actually match my other teeth. I can smile nice and big and not worry about it anymore and talk normal. Um, Cause this is just like, it's just like thick and bulky and it, hits into my mouth in a weird way that makes me talk weird, unfortunately. Sorry, camera battery died yet again. It's like, Kelly, you're talking too long. <laughs> Wrap it up. But basically the visual of like my tooth looking really bad and weird was like the least of my worries to be completely honest. If I didn't do this for a living, wouldn't be as big of a deal to me. But unfortunately, like I had also so many things like I was supposed to go on a work trip with all these other influencers and then, um, and then go to the wedding with like all of Steven's family and then go to my grandmother's funeral and memorial with like all my family who I, some of them I haven't seen in like 10 years. And it just was, it was bad timing, but overall that was the least of my worries. I was just really thankful that we were able to figure out what was wrong, what was happening, what was causing this. And before it got really crazy, cause like I said, you know, it could have been really bad and spread to brain, heart, like all these kind of things, which is really, really scary to even think about that, you know, cause you don't think really that your teeth are that effective of anything else in your health and stuff, but they really are. And that brings me back to when I got the physical with the high alkaline phosphate, that is a marker for oral disease and infection. And so even the month prior, I had already had it, who knows for how long, probably much, much actually longer than that, but I had already had it then. And that is what caused that high 
that high level that came back in my blood work before I even had any pain or anything at all. So it's just so, so crazy how everything is so connected. So if you learn anything from this, if something feels weird, take it seriously. It was just a crazy, crazy experience and I'm just glad that it is almost over. I can't wait to just get the permanent tooth put on and hopefully tomorrow everything goes well and it is all good. Um, also, I did mention that at the same time that this was all happening, right before I was supposed to leave for all these trips, I'm in the shower. I'm literally, I think I was crying in the shower, literally crying in the shower. All of a sudden the shower water starts trickling and like getting less and less, like the pressure was going down. And I was kind of like, what is happening? And then it starts to turn brown. I'm like, what is going on? I turn the water off really quick. I call Steven. So at our house, we have well water, which is great for like so many things. Like it tastes really good. We don't have to pay for water and stuff. Cause like we have a well, but our well pump broke. So we had no water. I was literally brushing my teeth, washing my face with like, we got big gallons of water and I would like put my hands like this and Steven would pour water in it. And I would like put it on my face when I was washing my face at night. It was insane. Like, even if you go to like boil pasta, you have to use like bottled water cause none of the water, it didn't work at all in our house. So that was also absolutely fabulous timing. I was like, what else is gonna happen at this point? Like nothing else can take me down. Um, oh my goodness gracious. But that has basically been the month of April. <sighs> Happy to see it go. Um, kind of rang in my 29th year on this earth in a weird, not so great way, but I'm just happy that we, I feel like we're on the upward and up now and everything is gonna be better. Everything's gonna be fine. And uh, hopefully this never happens again. And hopefully it never happens to any of you guys, but I'm just grateful that everything is okay. We have our health, we have water now in our house. And um, oh my goodness, it just like, was so so crazy and so i just didn't feel right just like jumping back in vlogging like nothing had happened and why were we gone for a month and a half and that's basically why because honestly for most of this month i was in a really bad headspace and just had so many things going on so many things that i had already committed to do that i couldn't say no to and the last thing i wanted to do was like get on camera and just try and like fake it for you guys because i feel like you can see through that and i didn't want to do that but i truly am in a better headspace now everything is going to be okay and um yeah that's basically where we've been. So thank you guys for sticking around. We have a lot of fun, exciting things. We just opened up the pool, which I'm so excited about. Like imagine if we were opening up the pool and we had no water, oh my gosh. Summer's coming, the weather's getting a little warmer. So definitely fun stuff coming. Lots of home vlogs, lots of just like fun things that we're gonna do on this channel. So we love you guys and I will see you very soon in our next vlog. Bye. And hopefully I have a new tooth then. <laughs> so last time seeing this tooth, <laughs> good riddance.